Hey, right, uh, welcome to the videos. Um, been really busy uh, last month or so working on safety valves. I did uh, quite a number of them. I've got uh, there's a, some of my production. There's 25 there, all various uh, pressures. 120, 125. I got a few at 130, and the, the new um, machining has made it a lot easier to uh, set them because now everything's kind of accurate and uh, uh, I'm almost able to set them using a depth mic and just by eye setting the screw and I'll put it on the boiler and they're within 20 pounds of where I want to be not even that le less than that even in some cases but uh, before we begin uh, what I'm going to do here today and show you a video here on uh, weighing a locomotive I wanted to show you this um, these two things that a gentleman friend of mine gave me and uh, it really, it's really something this is a uh, a protractor and it's in a, you know the old style case and this thing here has a crosshair in the middle here and um, it's got degrees in minutes and seconds and it's eight inch it's made by the union somebody or other and I guess you bring it over here and you, you got a vernier scale up on the top here you can see it see the vernier scale up in here and that you set the seconds you know and it's beautifully made it looks like it's all stainless steel maybe stainless or maybe just the you know the way it is and you can set accurate or measure accurately degrees it's just a beautiful piece, and I was really glad to get it. Um, I appreciate him giving it to me. Uh, so that it came, like I said, it came in this really nice case, and uh, it's a little bit tough to get in there. You got to kind of put it on an angle like that, so you can put it, it hooks underneath there, and it goes in there like that. And uh, he gave me that. He, I guess he figured I'd appreciate it. He was like eighty something years old, so I guess he figured he was gonna died a few years and nobody would probably throw it in the junk or not appreciate it and he knew I was interested in a lot of this stuff and then this is another thing he gave me which is a tachometer now look at this one I have a couple of these that are not nowhere near as elaborate as this this is just a beautiful piece um, the chrome plating or nickel plating is worn off it uh, but the if you look at the movements in the in the uh, if you look at the uh, all the movements and everything on there it's just beautifully made it's got, it looks like a watch almost and uh, it's got all the different um, attachments for it and this is what you actually made to um, these are made to check RPMs and now today's market um, <laughs> I have an electronic one it has a little flash thing here and it just you just put it on there I bought it off of eBay and it, you know it's digital and that works fine but if you notice this thing has um, on the bottom of it here has like a place for your thumb to go and then the, like your two fingers so when you hold it you're like holding it with, with a grip and then this goes against the end of whatever you want to to uh, to uh, measure the RPMs and it's got a point on there and you put it in the end like in the center and that'll tell you the RPMs of the motor I haven't tried it yet but I will and, and then he's got this one there's a there's a rubber o-ring or something was on there like a tire it's missing I guess it rotted but that you it's I guess that's an inch and a half or something that goes on on this sets on this thing and then you and then you can use this against something and it has other other uh, attachments different ways to center and all and it's really a nice piece and I'm uh, glad to get it uh, and who makes this let's see I don't know it's got the zeroing things on the back to zero it out and the cal cal other calibrating things on it. And uh, I want to check it out one of these days. But uh, it, it's really a nice piece. And it's, I think I'm going to start a collection of this stuff because somebody's got to preserve it. But anyway, that's so much for that. So much for the show and tell. All right, here we are. Well, it comes down to this. Build a locomotive. Well, how much does it weigh? I have no idea. Now, a few years back, 
my son Dan worked at a place where they had a big scale. So I brought my van up there, weighed it with nothing in it, wrote the weight down. Then another time when I had the locomotive and I went over and we weighed the locomotive with the same stuff, other junk that was in there, but now the locomotive's in there and you added the difference. And the engine and tender was 1,500 pounds. 1,700 pounds. No, wait. I think 1,500 pounds, including me and the water and the tender. But anyhow, I come up with this idea. Uh, well, I, I want to know what's on each axle. I want to know what's, how the weight is distributed. And obviously, you want most of it on the drivers. That's what with the, you know, the, the traction is on the drivers, not on the lead truck wheels or the trailing truck wheel. And uh, although the engine pulls pretty good, I want it to pull better. You get a couple of uh, heavy-duty cars and some heavyweights. When I mean heavyweights, I mean the passengers, if you get my drift. Uh, it's pretty rough pulling them. And we're going up 1.8% grade. And if you, if you know how to run the locomotive, you could do it. Uh, somebody who doesn't know how to run it, they give it too much throttle. You've got to really control that and you work with the, with the sonar cocks and stuff. But anyhow, uh, I looked it up on eBay or on uh, Google. I Googled it, and they come up with this elaborate, some guy was in England, the UK, you know, they do some beautiful work over there, except that maybe it's too elaborate. He come in, he had this thing with the scale, and did a hey, bada boop, bada bop, bada beep, all this stuff. And I thought to myself, well, that's nice, but what's the point in going through all that trouble to make that thing? There's got to be an easier way to do it. Well, then, there's a fellow on the West Coast, uh, and he, I don't know if he watches my videos, but if you do, Jack Bodenman gave me this idea, and he, and so I want to credit him with the idea of just using a basic bathroom scale. And that's what I got down there, just an ordinary bathroom scale. And he had it all propped up with stuff. I just happen to have a, a piece on the bottom that holds my stand together. There's uh, two pieces of tubing run there. And, of course, the ply was just there to make a shelf. But I put the, I put the ordinary bathroom scale there. And I, uh, it's Harbor Freight, good old Harbor Freight. Say what you want. $19 for that, okay? I had it for some other job. And... I'm just a piece of two by two there, two by four, cut in half, and I positioned it under the axle. And what you got to do is jack it so that the wheel just comes off the track, just comes off. And if you want to really get accurate, you can get a piece of shim stock, say a couple thousandths or five thousandths or whatever. When that moves, then you know you're up. Or if you want to get accurate, you get a thinner one, but. I did it so I could see the wheel turning. When I just can turn the wheel, then I know that it's, there's a weight is off of it, and I can kind of judge uh, from that point. And it's just basically a guess. Anyhow, you don't have to have it perfect, you know. So uh, what I did was, and I'll, and I'll lower, the, lower it down. i got to use the, I don't know what happened to the original jack handle. All right, now, now let's see. Get this down. I right, use the screw here, you know. Okay, now the jack's on there, and you get, use the old little wheel on the back over there, and you um, zero it out. Of course, you want to put the wood on there. You can do that too. The wood hardly is an insignificant amount. And then you just put this. And I hope you're being able to see this. You put this on the axle itself, which I'm on it right now, and then you put this jack under it. And screw this little thing up there so it just holds there. And and you jack it. And it's rocket science, right? Let me see, I gotta tighten this up. I'm on the axle. You tighten it up. And you watch the wheel. Oh, there it is. And I'm reading it. Well, let's see what I'm reading. I'm reading 160, but I think it's less than that. I think I've jacked it too high. Okay. Right, I could just now turn that wheel. Okay, and I'm reading uh, 150. Now, that's the trailing truck, 150. I'm going to move down here to the drivers and see what the drivers are. That's the main thing. And uh, you, you could actually add these up. So what I did is I made a little drawing here. Pretty, 
kind of a quick rude, rude sketch there and I just wrote down what the numbers were and if you add them up that's the weight of the locomotive pretty close it comes out to 800 800 pounds so the tender was probably 400 which would make it 1200 and I figured me and the water and everything else on is about another 300 uh, so um, you get 20 gallons of water in the tender when it's full times eight and you figure that out so it's about 1500 the engine and tender but the tender and me don't count as traction so it's only the locomotive so now I'm going to move down to the drivers and see what we got down here okay um, now I'm on there Let's see I got a little bit of weight on there so I want to try to get a zero uh, it's pretty close to zero. Let me just zero that a little bit better. Okay, it's close. Hey, you started the jack. You gotta tighten this up again. Always remember to do that. Okay. I need to just jack it. There she goes, right up. Oh, right there. And I'm reading 150. So, I got 150 here. And I got 150 over there, which is nothing for, for traction. Is so, so this is probably some of the problem I'm having. I got to get some of that weight somehow on here. Now, if you let that thing kind of go along for the ride like Lionel, well, there's always the possibility that thing could just bounce right off the track. So you got to have some weight on it. And if you try to put springs on it, that doesn't work either. If you try to just take all the weight off it and just let it go out in midair, the back end of the engine, it's going to sag all the time. So it's... Uh, it's supposed to put through leverage at this point, it's supposed to pull more weight over here, but it doesn't do that. So I got to come up with a system, maybe jack screws or something, to be able to put the weight more on here and take some off of there and put it over here. So there's also ways to fool with those. Um, uh, there's adjustments on that. So if I maybe adjust that up, it might throw some weight back here, but at least I'm, this way I'm able to tell where we're at. Now I'm going to do the second driver, see where that's at. Okay, uh, all right, I got that one jacked up. It's just, you can just see, I can move it there. You see, with the little slack that's in the side rods, I can move it, so I'm all right. So now, on that one, I'm about, about 150, about the same. One, I'm reading like 155, close to 160, so I might be a little off on the pressure, but I'm within 150, within a range. Now I'm going to do this one and see where we're at. All right, I got that one jacked up, and that one's reading one under 150, about 142 or something. So you see, there's less weight here, and it's not equal. It's more too much weight back there, and not enough up here, and that's where my problem lies. Now I've already checked this before, so to tell you, on the lead truck, I got 80 here, and then the front wheel, uh, I think it was 70. Let's see. Yeah. So I need to get, that's 170, 150 pounds. So it'd be nice to get at least 75 pounds of that weight up there and 100 pounds of that over here. So that would be, um, say, 450 pounds roughly for the three drivers. So if I took 100, that'd be 550. About 600 pounds here, which if the engine weighs 800, that means that three quarters of the weight is here on the drivers and that's what you want to be now the water in here so well, you should put water in it well you know this might look like a big boiler full of full of water but it really isn't around the firebox you only got three quarters of an inch all the way around and then about an inch or three quarters of an inch on top of the crown sheet so that couldn't even amount to more than a half a gallon of water there if that and then you got all the tubes of course in here and everything so I'm figuring if I said 10 gallons, it'd be a lot. So 10 gallons is what, 80 pounds. So you add another 80 pounds to the engine. So say say 60 pounds. So it's about one, eight, eight, little over 800. Because it was like, if you add up all these numbers, it comes out to uh, like 775. So 25 and about 825. Uh, just a quick number. Uh, what I need to do is get some more of that weight over here. And then I think I'll have what I need. Um, but this is a real simple thing, as you can see here. Nothing, nothing big deal. No rocket science here. I mean, 
Why are you going to go through all this trouble, make all this fancy crap and this and that and da 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 da? Uh, just too much work. This work, this works just as good. And uh, I'm getting, you know, a basic idea of where I'm at. And 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 doesn't matter what the reading is, even if it's off a hundred pounds, it doesn't make any difference. I'm weighing each one separately, so I'm getting a weight. I'm getting a weight distribution now. I don't know if that those members down below are sagging any. I have no idea. If you really want to, you can jack that up. If you want to do it from the floor, it's no good because you'd be jacking the whole engine up. But uh, you know, I don't know if that'll work. But this is all in one one unit. Now, if I really wanted to get really, really, really accurate, I get a thousand or two thousand shim stock. And when that slides out, then I'm just coming off the track and put something underneath there, another jack or jack up the middle, so that doesn't flex at all. But I don't think it's necessary. The idea is, if I can transfer the weight from the trailing truck onto the drivers, then I, I've got I've done something. I'm seeing where I'm at. I'm not guessing. I used to go in there and kind of guess. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video for right now, and then I'm going to try uh, doing that and see what I come up with, and I'll be back on the video. Okay. Now. I tell you that underneath here, there's bolts that go through. And with this socket, I designed it with this socket underneath here, I can loosen or tighten the tension on that spring, which consequently puts pressure against this journal box, which goes up and down. But I did that, and it made no significant difference. But if I take this right here, and I press it on this, when I press on this and lift this up or put more pressure down on this, the weight comes down. The weight actually comes down. It puts more, less on there. It puts less on there. Now, it's bottoming out you know, on the tongue in there. There's a tongue inside there. It's bottoming out on that. So, probably what I need to do is put a shim underneath that tongue because it's bolted on and lower it down so it'll go. Uh, raise it up so it'll go more of a distance and it looks like to me that when I do this I, I'm, a, I'm down to from 150 when I just do that on the one side I'm down to 115 so I, just by doing that so if I put maybe put another shim or something underneath there that would make it tighter how about that? Interesting. And it's like, if I do that, it's actually raising the back up, which I want to raise the back up because I built the engine, built the tender, and they weren't together, and I'm, I'm a little bit of a difference in the engine and tender. The tender is higher, so if I raise the back of that up, it's going to raise it up closer to the level with the tender. So that's probably what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to get in there, take the trailing truck, and take that tongue out of there and shim that so it's higher. And that way it'll drop more more of a distance. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to wind up having to cut that member that's like a slot in there and make it make it deeper so it has more room for it to travel. I think that's some of the problem. But that's interesting. Now, uh, I, I really should move the jack over to here and see if that's throwing, by doing that, throwing more weight on the driver. So I'm going to do that now and we'll come back. All right. I got the jack now set up underneath this axle, and I'm doing the same thing with the rod, and it's doing zero to the to the poundage, nothing, not moving it at all. So that means that the springs up here are given. It's not doing anything whatsoever to the. Pulling down, but it's not doing anything to the poundage here. Nothing. Not that. I'm going to get a cro bigger crowbar, as so I can put a little bit easier, a bigger screwdriver or something to put a little more pressure on it. All right, back that quick. See how quick? Very quick. Okay. Now, let's see what happens. Not even budging that at all. Let's see if it's doing anything 
what I'm doing is I'm trying to see if the springs are moving at all. <laughs> Nothing. Not doing a thing. Not 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 budging it. Oh oh, there it's doing a little bit now. Put more leverage on it. And less. It's going less. How's that? Doing that off. I gotta. What I need to do is get the whole trailing truck out of here and redo this whole trailing truck. And that's a, a job for the springtime. Uh, but I, I learned something here that uh, at least I know where I'm at using this. I know that it's doing something. I mean, before I used to be cranking this, cranking that, and getting nowhere. Now I know I'm getting someplace doing it. And um, I just had to get the right balance of get some of this weight from there over to here and yet maintain the the cantilever out there instead of it sagging you know and I need to do the same thing on the front take some of that weight off of there and um, uh, take drop the lead truck down now the other, one of the things I didn't mention here is you should take measurements from the track which is a good stable point to check um, put a mark and measure it what it is and do the same thing with the pilot over here so that you know whether whether it's teeter totting and where you're at and because by jack, jacking that changing that is you're 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 actually changing the the, the, the level or the uh, you don't want, you want it to be parallel you don't want it to be sagging frontward or backwards so we have to look at look into that too but I, I just want to do this quick video to show you that uh, well the winter time's coming now those of us who live in a cold areas of the country can work on this kind of stuff and get your locomotive a little more balanced and that was the idea behind this video and uh, this I guess is going to be part one and eventually I'll do after I get it fixed hopefully I'll do part two to show you that w what the difference was so right now just to recap we got it, all six uh, uh, wheels we got 10 11 well one two three four five six six axles you got 70, 80, 150, 150, 160, and 130. So we're going to take, take those measurements, write them down, and then we'll see where we come up when we fix it. So uh, one other thing I want to mention is that I've been watching my dear friend Lyle Peterson, Mr. P222, and I noticed that he... Uh, Maybe maybe did it subconsciously, but we have a sign off. Everybody has their own sign off. His is so long for now. Well, mine's always been from day one. We'll see you again on the next video. And I notice he's using that now. now one thing you want to remember: you remember the old Today Show with Dave Garraway. You remember him? He used to go, he used to send, put his hand up like that, and he would go, "Peace." Well, you know the hippies copied him. They went, they just changed it like to this, like peace, you know. So. Well, I'm flattered by that. If he did copy me, fine. If he just inadvertently copied me, I'm still flattered by it. I think that's great. So I'm going to start using his now. So we'll see you. And so long for now.